Gather ye friends round your flickering campfire and listen to tales of daring, horror and high adventure from the worn pages of history. Set aside thine unfinished DIY projects and play close heed to the words of your storytelling. But Uncle Bob Bob, I've almost finished concreting my living room. I've still got to finish the welding work on my doorknobs. And I'm still soundproofing my son's cot. What with? Cement. Should we contact the authorities? Everything okay, Tombo? Tombo? What kind of a silly name is that? My name is Tom. I have a wife, a driving licence. I'm a real person. No one calls me Tombo except for... The Silly History Boys! Oh no, I'm still here. Stop complaining, Tombo. After all, you're handcuffed to that nice warm radiator. Luxury! And you're in for a treat, listener, for tonight marks the final instalment of our samurai epic, the tale of Miyamoto Musashi. Will our hero at last become the greatest swordsman in the history of old Japan? But first... For the benefit of the tape... Who are we and what are we doing here? I am Uncle Bilbo, actor, thespian and part-time samurai. Do you like no theatre? I like all theatre. I am the unsolvable Sudoku, known enigmatically as the Bear Bear. I am bob the Casio bullet train. And I'm Tombo, and I would love to sleep in a tube. Together we are guilty of... The Silly History Boys Show! You join us on a lonely forest path high in the mountains south of Edo. A full bright moon shines and a cold wind rustles the pine needles. Down in the darkness is a man we know. A man with a drawn sword. A man who will one day become known as the greatest swordsman of all time. Miyamoto Musashi. Oh good. You again. What, what, what have you been up to, Mash? Mash, what have what you been doing? Don't call me Mash. Yeah, Bob, Bob, try and be cool, yeah? So, double M, or should I say M squared? What have you been up to? <sighs> I have been at study. He means fighting. Yeah, he did. It is true that for four years I have wandered the wild places of Japan, studying the way of the sword in quiet solitude. It is also true that I have compared my skill and techniques with many other wandering swordsmen. Did you win them all? Yeah, he did. You're so cool, Mash. All the mums say so. Can me and Pear Bear get a selfie with your lovely voice? By all means. No. I'll get the camera. The camera? What is this, 1996? <laughs> That's weird. A chain fell out of a tree and wrapped round my neck. That is weird. I've wasted my life! Pear Bear! Sweet Pear Bear! He owed me five pounds. And now he's dead. Follow that chain! Mush! Mush! Slow down! I'm wheezy! I'm tired! Can we get an ice cream, please? You think I climbed this mountain for ice cream? I think, knowing you, there's probably some kind of exotic murderer who lives here and you're going to fight him, probably to the death. That's exactly right. Alright, Boyo. I need my nail. I need my nail. Who dares show their face on my mountain? I hope you have a full purse to go with your empty head. Am I addressing the outlaw Shishiro? That's right, son. I am Shoshiro. To step within my chain's reach is to die. Who are you anyway, top loader haircut? I am Musashi, the swordsman. Ha! Musashi, is it? You and your wood and sword have made a small name in these mountains. I hope that I might compare my skill against your great name, Shishiro. Listen, but this is not the place for the click clack of practice swords and polite applause. If you step within the reach of my chain, then your purse pays for my supper. Your wooden sword goes on my fire, and your grave shall be whatever patch of dirt the wolves finish gnawing your bones on. Cool. I usually fight to the death. Tidy. I'm glad we're on the same page. Now, come and meet my missus. The old ball and chain. 
With this derogatory, sexist, and entirely old-fashioned remark, the bandit let a great length of iron chain fall from his hand. Shishiro flicked his iron wrist, and the chain came to life in his hand, whirling through the night air with cold, deliberate menace. Then something whistled fast through the freezing night air. Masashi looked down at his foot to see Shishiro's chain wrapped about his ankle. Uh Uh-oh. But not for long. Shishiro cracked the chain like a whip, which threw Masashi bum over thumb and into the snow. Uh, I liked the episodes where I just went through everyone more. Masashi was up in an instant, sword drawn and running at the bandit. But the chain flew, and its weighted end caught Masashi square on the forehead. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those days. You will never break the chain. It's one of those days. The chain flew once more. But this time, Masashi moved aside and closed on the bandit. Masashi's sword sliced towards Shishiro, but the bandit pulled his chain tight between his hands and used the taut iron links to fend off Masashi's attacks. Until he boomeranged the chain back into Masashi's head. It was a difficult evening. The chain's reach made it impossible to get close. (laughs) The bandit was a master. He used his chain like a whip, like a missile. My body was battered and broken, and only once did I come close enough to strike him. Have you had enough, Musashi? If you're tired and sore, then just kneel down in the snow and I shall ease your pass in. (sighs) Come here and say that. No, I think this is an appropriate distance. Now then, I've enjoyed tonight and I'm almost sad it's about to end. (laughs) But you're the one who looks a bit (laughs) choked up. (laughs) <laughs> the iron chain flew tight round Masashi's neck and began to tighten. As tears filled Masashi's eyes, he fell to his knees in the snow. He was dying. I wouldn't worry anyway. You're not even close to being the best swordsman in Japan. Close, but no cigar, Musashi. <laughs> My strength began to fade, but there was something in Shishiro's laughter. I was too far away to fight him. If only I could close the distance. Trembling, Masashi's hand reached for the short sword at his belt. (laughs) Oh, your little sword's not sharp enough to cut through my chain, you fool. He drew the short sword and the steel smoked in the freezing night. End of the line, Musashi. (laughs) One hundred and eighty. What a way to go! A lucky cheap shot from a man with a top loader buffo. I'm afraid I don't know top loader. But you fought well, Shishiro. You are indeed a worthy enemy. (laughs) You like to talk the talk, Musashi. But you'll never be a real samurai. I beat you, Shishiro. Oh, you're a fine swordsman, Musashi. But you've got no manners, see? No education, and you and you dress like a hipster scarecrow. You've been dying a long time. Well, you only get one go, don't you? Now, let me see it. Did I turn off the oven? Hmm, I think I think I did. I can't talk! <laughs> Shoshiro's words cut me deeper than any sword. I had always been an outcast, never accepted by swordsmen with wealth and status. <gasps> Unless you find the greatest of these gentlemen swordsmen, challenge him and beat him, then they'll have to take you seriously. <laughs> of course. Thank you, noble Shishiro, for moving the plot on with your dying breath. Actually, there's not much information historically on this duel. Oh. Well, I suppose there's no reason for you to die, then. Yay! Fancy a brew, mesh? Yes, please. Do you want me to pull that knife out your head? Oh, that would be super. Would you mind? Not at all. (laughs) Much better. 
Meanwhile, somewhere else in Japan. Oh, thank you. Hello, all you wonderful, important people. I am super delighted to declare this kitten sanctuary for the arts open. Oh, my. What a guy. I know from personal experience how important cute animals and the creative arts are for our community, and so I'm happy to give a substantial donation from my own personal fortune to ensure its continuance. You guys are too much! <laughs> anyway, I simply must go. I'm so sorry, I, I volunteer at a soup kitchen in the afternoon, and I still need to do 11 hours of sword practice. What? It's tough, but you know, it's my life. See you later, friends. See you later. I'll be thinking of you. What a nice man. Mm, yeah, nice. This is Sasaki Kajiro. Those who have seen him fight call him the demon of the Western provinces. He's fit. He is. You might say Kajiro is a perfect gentleman warrior. He likes art and music. He is impeccably dressed and always polite and respectful to his elders. Good morning! Hello friends and well-wishers. I'm just off for an improving walk before yet more charity work. Exercise, of course, and then drinking enough water. Mm -hmm. It's so wonderful how art exactly imitates life sometimes. Doing a character that is my life! Why don't we get Stu to play someone nice? He builds torture machines for a multinational corporation. Yeah, he, he threatened me. What are you two talking about? Nothing. Nothing. Kojiro is one of the most dangerous men in Japan, a legendary duelist and peerless swordsman. At the age of 30, he is a recognized master of the short sword, the katana, and the nodachi. And a nodachi is? The Japanese great sword, a five foot long, Samurai sword. That's a big sword. I mean, in five foot, that's as tall as Kylie Minogue. That, that's large. But for a sword, not for a person. It takes a strong man to fight with an Adachi, but Kajiro is a master. I invented a sword stroke known as the Swallow Cut. What? Kajiro's sword was so fast, he cut flying swallows out of the air with it. Well, actually, I based the swallow cut on the movement of birds in flight. I could never kill a little animal, or at least not in this version of the story in which I'm sickeningly pleasant. <laughs> Aren't I, my little winged friends? Oh, look at you. Look at your little beak. Oh, I just want to kiss it. Mmm, 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 beaky. He's like a Disney princess. Morning. Oh, you poor man. Here, have a pound. No, I'm not. No, please, please, I know you're proud, but just come to my soup kitchen. All of the soups are all vegetarian. No animals died in the making of my soup. I just get asparagus and I get an artichoke and I smash them together and turn them to liquid and then serve them hot. And that's why I call soup. Thank you, but I'm not here for soup. I am a swordsman. Well, I do lessons at the community centre for the children. I am not here for lessons. I am here to issue you a challenge. Oh my god, that is so sweet! Listen, you are amazing. I think it's wonderful that someone in your situation has such ambition. But, you know, I'm a master. I only fight other masters, yeah? I'm not saying that fighting a dirty, smelly mystery swordsman is beneath me, but... <laughs> well, don't really know how to finish that sentence, actually. Uh, one day... You'll get there. I believe in you. I do. Thank you for being so polite. Oh, you. You are so brave. Oh, look. A cat. That's Mr Nibbles. Yeah, I nursed him back to health at the centre. Really? I fed him by hand. Oh, it was so rewarding. I bet it were. Don't put Mr Nibbles in the bin, that's horrid! Why, I ought to teach you some manners, rotter. Brawling in the street isn't your style, Kajiro. But I know a place that we can meet. I don't know who you are, sir, but I don't duel peasants. I'm sorry to call you a peasant, but... I mean, just look at the state of you. I am Musashi. Musashi? <gasps> I do know you! You're the one who murdered the Yukiosha brothers and destroyed their sword school! I had two formal duels and took issue with them trying to murder me, if that's what you mean. We had a correspondence course. I was to be a guest lecturer. 
Well, now you can't. Listen, you are stinky, ill-mannered and horrid. The sword is an art for gentlemen and you are no gentleman of any kind. That'd still be you, Mr Nibbles. You're a nasty man with a nasty haircut, Mufashi. Very well. Name the place, then. I will meet you at the north beach of Ganyu Island tomorrow at dawn. No, not tomorrow. Scared? Of your personal hygiene? Uh, yeah, but not of your sword. I need time to organise all 3,000 high-tier members of the Sasaki Kajira fan club on Patreon to come and watch me beat you. As you wish. I'll just get your cat. Oh, well, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Here, kitty, kitty. Mr. Nibbles! Oh, Mr. Nibbles, he's rolled away! I'll get you for this, Masashi. I'll get you! See you on the beach. Bring a bucket and spade. You'll definitely need the spade. Yeah, maybe a bucket as well. I can fight my own battles. Sorry, I I was just... I know what you were going to do. You were going to say something pithy and spoil the drama. I wasn't. You were. I was just going to say that historically the duel took months to arrange and was partly part of a struggle between two Japanese lords. So all the stuff about cats didn't really happen but was funnier. Right, thanks. I need a boat. A pedlo, perhaps? Oh, 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 may we get ice cream? No. Meanwhile, at the home of Sasaki Kajiro, the man famous for being the most perfect samurai of all, is preparing for his duel. Hello, Kajiro's people! My K-Fans! Welcome to my exclusive livecast here on Patreon. Thank you so much for donating. Helps me to be the master swordsman the community needs. This has really gone in another direction since the first Musashi. So I'm going to do a video about my Dry Dry. Now, Dry Dry is the nickname of my nickname for my sword. I call my mighty Nadachi greatsword Drying Pole because it's long. Long, like a drying pole. You know, for your washing line. That is clever. You see, this is why I'm still semi-pro comedy-wise. Now, the Nadachi sword is a rare sword in Japan and they are very difficult to make. This makes Nadachi masters even more special. It's also very heavy, so it makes a very powerful sword, which I shall demonstrate for my loyal fans by cutting this sofa in half. Chaos! Oh wow, that was a four-seater. Normally, this heavy cutting power would be offset by the sword being slow and tiring to the swordsman. I, however, am incredibly physically strong and fit. Legend records that I was so fast, I could cut a flying bird out of the air. But we're not doing that because it's important to make me insipid and annoying so you, as an audience, like Masashi more. So I won't be showing my incredible sword speed by chopping birds. Instead, I will get the children of the neighbourhood to throw apples at me instead. Children, go! (laughs) Throw them past the children! (laughs) Oh, children, that's the best throwing I have ever seen. Thank you so much. Oh my god, is that? Yes. A scale model of Mount Fuji made from apples sliced out of the air by your magnificent weapon. Yes. You be my dad. A new. So you see, K-poppers, there's no need to worry about tomorrow's duel with that naughty Masashi. I will be fine because I am the perfect samurai. Oh, the eastern sea so blue, cause you're back in Japan, back in Japan. Is this boat for hire? Yep, boat for hire, recreational fishing, wildlife spotting, romantic cruises for couples. No petting, no stag do's, cash only, please. Your boat smells of fish. Well, I'm a fisherman. And what was all that? New markets, I'm an honor Peru. Now where are you going? Ganyu Island, please. Ah! No bother, Captain. Off to the island and back, is it? Can pick you up if you need, just have to keep the meter running, of course. Of course. Aye. Business or pleasure, Skipper? I'm fighting a duel. All right. With the greatest swordsman in the country. Oh, you're one of them dangerous samurai duelists, eh? That's pretty cool. Of course, the morning of the duel, Kajiro arrived early, partly to entertain the masses of his local fans. Good morning, Kajiro fans! I totes feel all your love right now. 
and also because he was a very polite man who always arrived early. Unlike some people. Right, best be off then or we'll miss the tide. Not before breakfast. Ooh, actually, no, that's nice. Uh, yeah, you've come to the right place, sir. I also own my own Driftwood-style surf beach party bar and restaurant. That rotting shack with nets hanging off it. Aye. Well, it's a bit of a dump. I believe the word you're looking for is rustic. While we're waiting for that villain Masashi K fans, I'd like to do a couple of acoustic numbers about feelings. My feelings for you. Take my love and put it in your hands. I'm gonna feel some feelings, baby. And take my love, put it all in your hands. You're gonna make me feel some feelings on you. Die! We've got all your top not in samurai hipster cuisine for you. We've got smashed avocado and crab on sourdough toast. Uh, we've got a very nice sardine poached eggs and spinach kind thing just sort of piled haphazardly on top of a single bagel. Or we've got the breakfast burger. Oh, I do have to fight a warrior of almost superhuman speed, strength and skill. Mm, something light then. Yeah. The burger then. Double battered cod fillet, hash browns fried egg, and onions on top of a toasted brioche bun. It'll sit on your stomach like a fairy's eyelash. That does sound good. I think I'll have the rice. Rice! An excellent choice, sir. A popular breakfast in Japan, according to Google. Oh, a call back. I know. Put it in your hands. You're gonna make me feel some feelings on you. Meanwhile, Kojiro had been waiting quite a long time. The entire morning, in fact. Thanks, fan! Thanks so much! Where's Masashi? His most daughter isn't here, you know. I'm a little bit cranky is the word, yeah. Maybe there's a good reason, but I, I do hope his lateness is not a calculated effort to disrespect me. That was delicious. I can't believe you convinced me to go with a breakfast burger. I can't believe you ate all of it. I mean, you practically inhaled it. Would you like a frothy coffee? Another call back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go on, then. It was mid-afternoon, and Musashi had still not arrived. Hey, man. Hi. How are you? Listen, are you are you the caterer? Uh, no, uh, I'm a narrator. Well, I didn't think I'd be here this long, and now my fans are getting hangry. Sorry, I, I really can't help with that. Ready to go, or can I tempt thee to one more frothy coffee? Let's see, uh, mid-afternoon. Uh, how long does it take to get to the island? Oh, not very long at all. Mm. Could take you on the bird spotting excursion first. Could see a turn or a shag. Perfect. I want to be there just before sunset and just before the evening tide. Okay, so that's 2,700 banana and crisp sandwiches. No crusts on mine. Extra crusts on mine. So is that everyone who's having a sandwich having a sandwich? I want a wrap. Can I have quiche? Oh, dear. Oh, well, I guess I'll just... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, what's that? It's a boat in the distance. A boat is coming. Look. Late. Nine and a half hours late, bro. This is a grave insult. Bring me dry dry. It's time to hang Masashi out to dry dry. <laughs> All those versions I read and none of them said that. That is a grade A quip. And you say you're only semi-pro. Barely that. Incredible. Sorry, I'm late, Kajiro. There's so much to do round here. I've had a lovely day. You're not on holiday, Masashi. You are here to die. Actually, you're wrong. I've got a souvenir. A new sword to test on you. What do you think? Oi, that's my spare oar. Carved it myself. You've brought a wooden sword to fight me? I know you're the perfect samurai, Kajiro. I thought it would make it impressive if I beat you. 
with a bit of wood. You are right, late. You insult my skill with a wooden sword, and you're dirty, and ill-mannered, and cocky, and you've got a stupid haircut, and your clothes are rubbish, and someone bring me my sword! Yeah, bring him washing line, or whatever it's called. Kajiro drew his sword. The steel burned as the sun began to set. Sun's going down. I best make this quick. All right, that's it. I'm going to kill you so bad now. In a fit of anger, Kajiro threw away his scabbard and charged down the beach. Ah! Masashi brought up his newly carved sword and quipped one last time. You've lost, Kajiro. No man who planned to live would throw away his scabbard. In the spray of the sea, the two samurai met. To fight Kajiro was to experience an artist of death. The great Nodachi was a flickering flame in his hands. His attacks were lightning, and his defense like stone. The steel blade bit great notches and scars into Masashi's wooden sword. There was anger in Kajiro, but his cuts were perfect and strong as hammer blows. As they fought, Masashi's eye flipped once to the horizon, then back to his opponent. Kajiro's supporters saw the other swordsmen hesitate and drove him on. Kajiro's blade hummed and hissed through the air, cut after lightning cut, driving Masashi back, back towards the sea. Get the sea, Masashi, fraud. Just a little further, Kajiro. We're almost there. Time to finish you. Almost, almost. And three, two, one. As Masashi counted one, the setting sun blazed across the bay and into Kajiro's eyes. As the sun blinded the perfect samurai, Kajiro raised his sword to deliver the perfect swallow cut. Oh, my eyes! In the same instant that Kajiro brought up drying pole, Masashi brought up his oar, but faster, and delivered a swallow cut that was even more perfect than Kajiro's. But blinded by the sun and by his rage, Kajiro's cut missed Masashi by an eyelash. But my cut struck Kajiro down. Wow! Masashi! That was a perfect stroke! A masterpiece! For my insult, please accept my apologies. Kajiro, I did not bring a wooden sword to insult you. I did it so I did not have to kill such an artist. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. Kajiro, I am truly sorry. There's no shame. My sword is in my hand, and I believe I have been beaten by the best. Gah! I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watch sea breams glitter in the dark near the townhouse gate. All of those <coughs> moments shall be lost in time. Like tears in the rain. Oscar's coming, Pear Bear. Um, are you finished? These K-popers don't seem too happy. He's killed Kajiro! Get him! Shame you ruined my spare oar. We might be getting away a bit quicker than this. Oh, well, there we go. Pull, pull. The tide's pull, going out. Pull. Ah, tide going out. All part of the plan, eh? No, not all of it. This is not really the end of the story of Miyamoto Musashi. He lived for many years after all this. He opened the sword school to teach others what his life had taught him. He fought many more duels, but he never took a life again. No one really knows the sermon, but it seems that after Kajiro Musashi was a changed man. In the last chapter of the Book of Five Rings, he wrote, My ultimate aim of martial arts is not having to use them. As the years grew by, Musashi, the teacher, grew older. As we all do, of course. In this quieter life, Musashi became a keen gardener, a poet, and a painter. But in his final moments, just before he died, it is written that Musashi drew himself up straight, made sure his sword was in his hand, gripped it tight, and then fell asleep. When Musashi died, he was made a Kenshi of Japan, which roughly translated means a saint of the sword. And though he died, his words and deeds live on, and have inspired many people, in distant futures and in distant lands. There is nothing outside of yourself that can ever make you better. Nothing from without can make you stronger, richer, quicker, or wiser. Everything is within you. Everything exists in you. 
Do they inspire you to write a very long script? Yes. With a lot of sound effects and pseudo-serious philosophic endings about uh, self-belief? Yes. This is the Silly History Boys show. Save this for your therapist. Sorry, but no more samurai for a bit. No more bob-bob. Until I do Revenge of the 47 Ronin. And how long is that? The opera is four and a half hours long. No. 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 Silly man. That brings us to the end of another exciting episode of... The Silly History Boys Show. We are the Silly History Boys. And until next time, we are, as always, sorry. Sorry! Sorry! It's too bad she won't live. But then again, who does? Awesome Samurai Beach Party, or Episode 9 of the Silly History Boys Show, was written and produced by the Silly History Boys. Musical accompaniment was provided by Lord Fast Fingers and Daniel Bradley of Daniel Bradley Music. The role of Miyamoto Masashi was smouldered by Will Uncle Bilbo Tristram, whose performance has been the cause of some confusing feelings for us all. Pained narration and the villainously kind and generous Sasaki Kojiro were given life by Stu Pear Bear Perry. The voices of teenage girls, narration, and the murderous bandit Shishiro were provided by Tom Tombofer. The narration and the salty fisherman were played by Rob, Uncle Bob Bob Bond, or me. Hello. We also take a moment to thank those who dishonour themselves by providing their voices of displeasure for the credit. Rest assured that the ninjas hired by the Silly History Boys are on their way, and in the black of some terrible night will make you regret helping out your friends. If you have enjoyed this week's instalment of the Silly History Boys show, wrong with you. Please consider giving the show a like and a rating and a review on your chosen podcast platform. <laughs> Maybe you can even tell some other people, your friends or enemies, either suits us. You can also visit our Facebook page at Silly History Boy Show and hit us up on Twitter at SHB underscore show. <sighs> Philosophic introspection, deaf. I think we really ought to finish on a song this week. Take my hit it, Pepper! And put it in your hands I'm gonna feel some feelings, baby And take my love Put it both in your hands You're gonna make me feel some feelings on you Never want to hear the name Mushashi again.